So Derwin, thanks for being here. Um, talk to me in light of everything that happened today and what's going on, what you would say to parents and kids that are watching. Yeah, you know, I, I think the first thing, like like all of us, like my heart's broken for Charlotte. I mean, this is my adopted home. And you just sit and just mystify, like, not again. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the first thing that you would say is, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you, at any age, would have to experience something that is just so traumatic. I, I mean, this will forever be etched in the memory of, of their souls. Mm -hmm. um, there are two families that are hurting immensely, a young man's family who's uh, gonna miss him deeply, and then another family has lost a young man as well because of, because of what he did. But in times like, like this, all you can say is I'm sorry, and sometimes the best thing you can do is it's just simply your presence. Um, and then to say, we can't walk and we can't live in fear. Um, how do we live in love? Mm -hmm. um, how do I make a difference? And so if everybody makes just one small difference, those small differences will become large. Um, I mean, like, where does a kid get a gun? How does it get to that point? Um, but the families, the families need love. Those students need love. Um, regardless of what faith a person is, like we need to pray mm -hmm. in Charlotte. And, and I know sometimes for pe people who aren't of faith, they go, well, well, what do prayers accomplish? And here's what prayers accomplish. First of all, it keeps us dependent that there is a God. There's a God who understands, mm -hmm. but he always uses people to make an impact. Mm -hmm. And so if I could, I would, I would love to hug each and every one of those kids. I would love to... Um, just to be present for those families because the amount of pain and grief is just simply overwhelming. And uh, so as I'm reading through Twitter um, and I'm reading your post today and I'm, 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 just, I'm just shocked because I have a daughter that's 22, I have a son that's 18. Uh, when we were in school, it, it was, you know, you just didn't think about those types of things that would ever happen. Um, and so it reminds me of Psalms 23, 4, though I'll walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me, your rod and your staff, they, they comfort me. And so we need to comfort each other, uh, but we also need to examine each other and say, how can my little bit make an impact? Mm -hmm. And um, as a parent, I just couldn't imagine losing a child. And what gets me through times like this, so as a follower of Christ is God understands what it's like to lose a child because he lost his son. And so he understands our pain, but in the resurrection, he's actually done something about it. And so I want to lament with Charlotte, but I also want to say, what can I do to just be a little light in a time that just seems so dark? A lot of times, in the news, well, we cover bad stories all the time, and they're shooting after shooting. What would you say to people who question, okay, well, why do bad things happen? Because you hear that a lot from yeah. people after situations like this. Yeah. And what do you say to them? Yeah, you, you know, um, my first experience was a gun. Is, is, is a, I was from a very impoverished area, lots of gangs, lots of drugs. My first experience with a gun is a gunshot, and there was a man literally dead on the ground, blood was everywhere. So I'm just, I'm just not into guns, um, it, you know, and, and so that image is continuously etched in my mind. But what do I say to people when they go, well, why do bad things happen? And I'll say, you know, sometimes we just may never know the answer. Um, but I do know this, if God doesn't give us freedom, then we don't actually have the freedom to love. We would be robots. Mm -hmm. And freedom is so precious that we can actually use it to do destructive things. Mm -hmm. And so I can't understand all of why everything bad happens, but I do know God has entered into it. And when we say, God, where are you? I often think he looks back at us and says, where are you? What impact can you make? As little as it is, what impact can we make? But a lot of times 
uh, in, in suffering and pain, we, we, just, we just need to be held. We, 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 just need, we just need comfort. And I don't think there's enough of that that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, our society is so angry. Um, our society is so unkind. And I, I, I think in moments like this, in great pain, we take a step back and go, wow, how can I be loving? How can I be positive in so much negativeness? Mm-hmm. So we're hearing that this was a bullying situation. The shooter was bullied um, at school. So what do you think when you hear about um, kids getting bullied and resorting <coughs> to violence? And also the kids I spoke with today say they didn't think of anything when they saw this fight break out at school because that's a regular occurrence yeah. in schools now. You know, um, hurt people hurt pe- people. Mm-hmm. So um, if I'm hurt on the inside, it's going to go somewhere. And so the first thing that I would ask is, is what context and what pain is causing others to inflict pain upon others? You you know, um, when I was in school a thousand years ago, it was normative to quote unquote bully. The difference was is now you, you didn't you didn't shoot up schools. You didn't you didn't you didn't shoot folks. There was just various. But now there's like this rage that is just simply unleashed Mm -hmm. and somehow uh, we need to do something about it. I certainly don't have the answers, but I know I can do one thing about it and that's love. I can, I can come on the show. Um, I can minister as a pastor. Um, But we have to ask the question is why do I want to make someone else feel bad about themselves to feel good? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I often say as a pastor is you can tell a lot about how someone feels about themselves by how they treat other people. So if I'm hurting, I want you to hurt. Mm -hmm. If I'm loving, I want to love you. Mm -hmm. If I'm an encourager, I'm going to encourage you. Mm -hmm. But who knows the environments uh, that people are coming from? What would you say as a pastor to people who are just living in fear right now? They're fearful to go to church. They're fearful to walk into school. They're fearful to go to the movie theaters. Yeah. Well, 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 and... And that's what terrorism does, is it, is it wants to create fear. Um, and we have a synagogue last week that was shot up. Uh, I mean, how sad is it that a 97-year-old Jewish woman escapes the horrors of the Holocaust in Europe and comes to America, the land of the home, the free and the brave, and is slaughtered by a supremacist? Uh, That makes me want to have resolve to love even more. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I would say is that's what terrorism wants you to do is to be afraid. And what I would say as a follower of Christ is that perfect love casts out all fear, that in the midst of great fear, we need greater love Mm -hmm. and nothing is greater than love. We need more people to commit to say, how can I be loving? Like as Americans, we're great at making money. We're great at innovating. We're great at doing a lot of things. Let's make love great again. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to guess you probably have a lot of people in your congregation from Matthews as well, from, from that community. Have you heard from any of them that um, possibly go to the school? Or what would you say uh, to the people in that community that are hurting? Yeah, the first thing I would do, uh, along with the other pastors, is, is let's weep and cry. Um, so often, particularly as Americans, we try to get over hurt too fast. And sometimes we just have to sit in it and we have to do what the ancient Jews would do. And it's called lament, where you just cry out to God and you lament. And we need time for that lamenting to actually heal our hearts, to strengthen us. And, and, and so we want to be a resource to provide counseling. We want to be a resource to provide care, um, you know. This is our home, and so we believe that as the church, not just Transformation Church, but all church churches and other communities of, of faith, that it's important for us to say we are available because I do believe people are hungering for uh, a spiritual connection to something greater because we just don't find it in other things. And it's almost like our country is, is just groaning um, and in need, and, and the greatest need is love. Um, what would you say to parents? We have, I've heard several parents today that didn't have kids at this school, but they're saying, do I talk to my kid? Should I talk to my kid? Yeah. I know you 
have two kids <clears throat> yourself. What would you say to those parents and how do you even bring up this topic? Yeah, so what I would say is the first thing is, is talk to your kids. Mm -hmm. um, growing up in the environment that I grew up in, I had to have these talks. Mm -hmm. That it was normative that not if gunshots go off, but when gunshots go off, mm -hmm. this is what you do. Um, and it's pretty sad. You know, it, 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 it's really sad that I had to have those talks. And so it's conversations that I've had with my kids for a, a while mm -hmm is you got to be alert simply because we live in a world that's that's really jacked up but there's also a lot of beauty in this world mm -hmm. there's also a lot of compassion in this world there's also a lot of things to care for about in this world but here's what's most important right now in this world it's the person that looks in the mirror at you every morning and you have the opportunity to write a story of love. You have an opportunity to be a conduit of God's grace. You have an opportunity to be negative and not, uh, I mean, to be positive and not negative in a world that's filled with so much of it. But, but we can't li live in fear. Um, we have to equip our kids to say, hey, if this goes down, this is what you do. And so it's sad, but those are the times that we live in. But we can't be held prisoner to it. What's your hope for the future of Charlotte moving forward from something like this? What do you hope can come from conversation or what's your hope for the future? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, no, it, it, it is. And I want to give an answer that, that, that is going to make an impact. The only thing that I can think of is um, out of the greatest tragedy in human history, an innocent man was hung on a cross. And for three days, it looked terrible, it looked bleak. But then he rose again from the dead and said, I'm going to make all things new. And so my hope is from this tragedy that parents, kids, government officials, myself, you, all of us would take a moment to reflect and say, how am I making the world better? What am I actually doing? Mm -hmm. Regardless of ethnicity, regardless of class, regardless of gender, regardless of lifestyle, whoever I am, in light of this great pain, how do I ease the burden? How do I become an encourager? How do I become, in, how do I become some, someone that champions life? Mm -hmm. um, these families are going to need us. Um, I, I don't know them, but I'm going to pray for them. And typically when there's tragedy, people are close by for a few days. But as the days turn into weeks and months, then they tend to be alone. Whoever's their support system needs to be there with, with them because this isn't something that you get over. It is some, something that God can get you through, but it's not something that you get o over. And I'm praying for Charlotte that we wouldn't get over it so quickly, but that we would get through it to say, how can we do things better? Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, um, you know, just that um, please don't live in fear. Um, living in fear is what causes negative things to happen. As best as you can, live in love, live in hope. Um, even when people cut you off in traffic, <laughs> even when you think people are being obnoxious, mm -hmm. um, tomorrow and the day after and the day after is a great day to say, not only am I going to make my day great, but who are people that I can help their day become great? Mm -hmm. Doran, thank you so thank much you. for being on here.